Alright, a response video of sorts to a blog post or something like that at physicsforums.com. Uh, so it's a description of uh, what are magnetic field lines are. Magnetic field lines real is the question answered. Um, and it's a, you know, a nice description of a lot of the um, conventional physics and um, how it's understood uh, in terms of or described or how it's how people attempt to illustrate the force the um, effect of magnets um, and specifically uh, their dipoles and that makes explain them a little more complicated so I would argue though that it's sort of missing a feature in the sense that you can't really illustrate uh, what's going on with a magnet in um, two colors, so to speak. Um, it uh, doesn't, the, the two fields are really uh, account for four interactions. When two magnets interact, there's really four interactions. There's the plus, uh, there's the attraction and repulsion to the pole, one pole, and then the attraction and repulsion of the other pole to the other pole, the poles. So there's essentially four interactions, and they really can't be uh, understood um, in a um, drawing that only has black and white. And it's four things going on. You sort of need an extra, you need an extra color to be able to represent it accurately. So I, I'm proposing this as a better way to illustrate what magnets do, how they work. Um, and I would argue that um, I think it goes deeper. I think this explanation is also um, accurate in that I think the reality, this is a better description of what's actually happening in reality uh, to magnets. So let us start with the traditional description, or uh, diagram anyway, of a magnet. And um, close enough to centered, I think. Uh, so we have the field line um, idea, and I guess I'll do that in a third color, just not to create any bias, and the idea is the lines kind of do this sort of thing, bowing out, they come out kind of straight and then get wider and wider as they go further out, so I didn't really describe that very well, uh, I mean uh, closer and closer, and that's one way of describing, and now this is often detailed with arrows to indicate which way this field is moving and it would be done on both sides and have opposite directions you know same directions um, so another way to illustrate it is the kind of Maxwell regarding charge where you use divergent lines to indicate the strength of a field and um, again it's a, a with distance you can see the lines go further apart that means the field is weaker and these lines can essentially be drawn on a radial uh, map as just go where the distances are always the same so when there's the same distance the line would follow the same distances and so wherever the distance is the same that's where the line would go and you can illustrate the same way that way um, now the flaw is that if I were to draw these lines from the north side or the south side of the magnet in the same color, you're really not going to get the idea that these are two different things and they're just going to end up turning into kind of a mess. Um, and not that it's, you know, the color is being a little bit bleedy. Um, so that's basically, they attempt to illustrate a magnet in a way that I think is insufficient to the purpose. Um, because the magnet's a little bit more complicated. So we draw the magnet and um, I'll attempt to explain the point. So I would argue the better way is the, to understand that a magnet is essentially radiating force, moving the speed of light, very much like a light bulb does, that rays are the right way to understand it and that um, you could just have the density of the rays indicating the strength of the field in any one location. 
that particular what this part of the magnet is producing and the point would be as it produces this field um, uh, evenly uh, around its circumference and, and of course like if it was a light bulb you could understand that it, it can't radiate through an obstacle but that it has some presence in all these directions so just like a it was a light bulb it would be brightest at this point and it would be less bright as you go around now the same thing is happening to the south side of the magnet um, and so you have a essentially mixed force uh, which is going to ruin this marker <laughs> so but anyway um, and uh, that's the f real field as it exists that's what the magnets really doing so it's creating a strength of of blue and orange and the two are in some locations mixed and in other locations quite segregated and that accounts for how magnets appear to function so when you put say if you were to use something like a gauss meter a gauss meter is basically just taking one pole of the magnet at a time it's it's forcing the exposure to the field to be oriented one pole at a time so the the gauss meter is essentially saying if this was the device this is this magnet can move back and forth but it can't flip so it's going to measure how how much repulsion is there or how much attraction is there and that's all it can really do so it's not really going to give you an accurate understanding of the whole field it's just going to tell you how how like like the north side will face this and it'll say yes there's a very strong field here and if i put a and if i put a north face here uh, from the gauss meter it would say it would give you a big negative number negative 100 so this would be positive 100 and this would be negative 100 i know you can't see that but close enough um, <clears throat> but in reality because this field is mixed you have to understand that if you did put a magnet say here and so we're going to start talking about iron filings <laughs> um, just like the compass needles uh, what's going to happen is that it's going to have a the I drew it backwards these errors are you know difficult to avoid sometimes obvious kind of plus minus errors jeez oh, fingers aren't a very good eraser anyway um, so the iron filings become magnetic when exposed to the field and they will line up their magnetism will line up in opposite to the existing magnet in terms of the opposite orientation of the poles because the orange is attracted to the blue and the blue is attracted to the orange and as stated the orange is repelled by the orange and the blue is repelled by the blue so there are four effects taking place um, but the point being is that this the the attraction between the orange and the blue will be strong the attraction between the blue and the orange will be strong uh, and the repulsive forces will be a little weaker because they're further distant and so there'll be a strong attraction here now this the attraction from the top down is going to be the strongest but this will also be a very strong attraction so anyway the iron filings when you put them on are just basically lining up to those four conditions of how close am I to the thing I'm attracted to and how close am I to a thing I'm repelled by and so for this blue piece it's very much repelled by this blue it's attracted to this orange it wants to get to the orange it wants to get away from the blue but the orange is being pulled strong towards the blue <laughs> and it's kind of a weak repulsion for the orange here so if you broke this magnet into two monopoles one of them you know would fly into the magnet the other one would fly away obviously all of them would fly into the magnet as dipoles uh, if they could and the point is is they're prevented from doing that now I think uh, hopefully this orientation is correct so the obviously it'd be another magnet here uh, okay the it would line up very close to straight up and down this magnet 
and so this line would, you know, I haven't drawn it perfectly. Um, get that in the picture. Uh, <coughs> so they'll line up north, south, north, south. Oh, obviously I drew that wrong. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Oh, so we have, see, that's what I'm saying. Those little mistakes. All right. So just this one would be going something like this. All right, and then they bend around north, south, north, south. Now, when you pile a bunch of magnets on top of each other, you essentially create another magnet. So that's essentially what's going to happen to all these iron filings as they pile up, as they become a magnet. So in an essence, what you're going to end up creating is a bunch of new, little smaller, weaker magnets that are going to have the opposite orientation to the original magnet. They're going to the reciprocals of the original one and every one of those lines every one of these new magnets you create are going to be repulsive and so um, they're they're attracted to the main magnet but they're repulsive to each other so they're going to create a circumstance where <coughs> the local field is weaker so even though these look like big magnets I want you to understand they're they're weaker magnets than this main one much weaker but this local field there's a lot of repulsion going on um, but they're all attracted to the main magnet so any filing is, is essentially forced to make a choice it either jumps on this line or jumps on this line or jumps to this line but it it, uh, it has no ability to stay in one of these locations because of the repulsion. It can't line up and stay there. So it gets pulled into one of these magnets. And so essentially, um, that's why there's field lines. Because nothing can exist between these two repulsive magnets. And uh, you know, no magnet can line up in that circumstance. And all of these are attracted to the first main magnet and so the lines are rather arbitrary in the sense that the stronger you make one of these the thicker one of these lines gets the more the stronger it becomes and the further away the next line has to end up moving so the lines don't have any there's no set line um, it does depend on chance in terms of how much weight the line might acquire and there's also no obligation for these lines to be continuous at all. So they can be broken and they're still going to be the same. They're going to still have the same orientation as a magnet that's going to be opposite the original magnet. And um, they're going to still have the same effect in the sense that they're still all going to be repulsive to each other as lines of little magnets, as a collection of little magnets making a big magnet. So the lines themselves become magnets and create another field. Now, in the article, it was sort of stated that the field is changed, and that's kind of a tricky word by the iron filings. The field is added to. It can't be changed. The magnet always produces the same field, and the field can't be affected by other fields. It can only be added to. So you can only add another field. So what you're basically doing is this blue field is really blue here, and now you're adding an orange field. So now you're creating a new kind of light. So if you thought of it as light, you have blue light coming out of the main magnet, and now this field line is going to start irradiating it with orange light. So now you have two colors of light in here, a mixture. So that's changing the field by adding to it but you haven't changed the original magnetic field at all. Um, it still has the same strength and all that stuff. It's just that now you've diluted it. And by diluting it with another field, um, obviously, even if you had a monopole magnet, which, which to measure things with, that mixed field is not going to be as attractive or as repulsive once it's mixed. Uh, because obviously attraction and repulsion cancel each other. So that's, I think, a more accurate way to understand what the magnet's doing. Now, I would argue that this magnets really are radiating force, just like a light bulb, um, and that that force comes in the f in, from the external universe, and that it is actually gravity, 
and that gravity is a mixed force of uh, this, these two kinds of energy, um, positive, negative, north, south, however you want to describe it, um, electron force, proton force, and that that force is just goes in just like gravity into everything, and it uh, everything's at equilibrium. So as much that goes in comes back out, and the magnet is basically taking a mixed force, a random force from the universe, and segregating it based on uh, positive and negative or north south, uh, however we want to look at it, and um, electron proton. <laughs> so those would be the uh, so I, uh, that would just just to add an explanation of why I think uh, this radial idea is also confirmed in the sense that it can make um, gravity better understood. Um, but regardless, the the point is is that you need to understand that the two forces are fundamentally different coming out of the two poles, and that there are really are four interactions: the the attraction between the south and the north and the south and the south and the attraction between the uh, I mean repulsion and the attraction between the the secondary magnets with the north pole and the secondary magnet with the south pole and that those four interactions are what will dictate how the compass needle or iron filing lines up so I'll try to keep this short and uh, tolerable. So any um, questions or comments would be appreciated. I uh, hope I haven't offended anyone, <laughs> which is the, the risk uh, challenging conventional ideas. But anyway, um, yes, I appreciate any kind of um, feedback uh, anyone cares to offer. Thank you.